What's up guys, Double Dog Gamer here, and today we're taking another look at Broken Arrow, an upcoming RTS game that has really caught my attention for a while now, and has looked like it's getting closer to release. Now what Broken Arrow is, it's a modern day RTS that's kind of a cross between war game and world in conflict, but with large scale battles from everything from infantry, ground, air, to even naval and tactical nuclear weapons. Imagine covering a marine amphibious landing with V-22s, LCACs landing tanks, and having cruise missile strikes from sh uh, ships out in the sea. You got it all that pretty much there that you could really want with a modern day RTS, along with UAVs being able to spot targets and call for fire and, you know, direct fire. To things. This game is shaping up to be what fills the gap after Wargame kind of just stopped really developing and adding new content and is really something I'm looking forward to and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Some of the cool things that this game is doing is right off the bat mod support so people can mod the game. That was one of the biggest downfalls with Wargame while you could mod it you couldn't add your own units and your own unit um, models in it so you'd have to like rename like playing an AC-130 and there it would be an AC-130 but it's an F-15 and things like that. Along with that all the vehicles are customizable so you can get your Abrams and put it into your deck to play but you can kind of pick what kind of ERA it has on it whether it has a Tusk kit or you know SEP or anything like that and same goes with any vehicle. Humvee you can pick if it has up armor Humvee if it has no armor Humvee. You get to really kind of choose what you want to do with these vehicles in the game and what their job is going to be. If they're going to be going up against IFBs or if it's just going to be going up against infantry you can set it up and build it exactly like that. Same with aircraft. What weapons you want to do. Is it going to be just burying troops around or you want it to have hellfires to be able to take out armor and things like that. I think this game's in a great position to really fill a niche in RTS games. While uh, War Game was amazing, and I love Warno, Warno is a Cold War game, and there's not really that you can kind of expand upon that um, when it comes to what you want to do unit-wise. This is future-proofed. Uh, somebody comes out with a new aircraft, you can add it into this game. Not only that, while War Game had a single player, it was really dumb AI. Um, it was terrible to play single player wise, not Broken Arrow. You're going to have a single player experience that you're really going to enjoy and the AI will react to you and be able to fight you in a way that a normal player would instead of just sending waves of tanks down the same road. Also, the developers are really passionate about this game. They're constantly putting dev diaries out, gameplay trailers, showing the community what's coming in the game, very, being very open about what the game's about, what you can expect with the game, and their passion for it is making me excited for it. Because when a developer's passionate about the game, you know sure as shit they're going to give it you the best game that they possibly can and the game that they want to give you. I can tell you outright, one of the things that I don't like about the game immediately is the smoke effects. I think they kind of look... I mean, some of the, the... When you see them from above, they look pretty cool, but when you get real close in there, it, you can kind of see... Uh, it kind of gets a little weird. But, you know, hey, it's still being made. Game's not out yet. Ain't gonna trash it too hard. But on top of that, you also get destructible environments. Buildings will get destroyed, fall apart, and things like that, which is something really cool that they added into it. Uh, there are a few RTS games where you can destroy things, and it kind of doesn't look as good. Some of these buildings, when they get destroyed, look absolutely amazing. Well, this game does feature large unit combat and large maps. The UI is pretty simplistic. It doesn't seem like you have a lot of control over what the uh, kind of similar how war game is whether you want to turn off certain weapons or turn things off like this and prioritize things um the ui is pretty simplistic it looks like it might be pretty easy to get into for most people who aren't just war game nerds and that are just going to constantly have that meta and spam things like that and while we haven't seen any gameplay yet with tactical nuclear weapons we have seen it in multiple trailers which I'm going to say is absolutely going to be a thing that is in this game because we have seen from a lot of these gameplay uh, material tomahawks being fired and used as, um, you know, to take out SAM sites or take out artillery positions and things like that. So if you're going to have tomahawks, there's obviously going to be a tactical nuke at some point in time with this. Um, how and when you can use it, especially when it comes to the multiplayer, who knows? It might actually be disabled for multiplayer. It might be something you can use in the single player, but... I'm excited to see that tactical nukes make a return because that was one of the coolest things in World of Conflict, a thousand percent. As of right now, we've only really seen the Russian military and the Marines be showed off, which leads me to believe that if it does release maybe in early access, that'll probably be the two factions we get right off the bat is Russia and the probably their airborne, their VDV 
um, and the U.S. Marines, and then from there they'll add different divisions. We'll get the Army and maybe, you know, different things like that along with Russia, and then from there on we just keep getting more countries and more countries and modders keep releasing more stuff and more stuff. But I'm really loving what we see with this game. The camera controls look pretty good. Um, the graphics look absolutely amazing. The maps look fantastic. Um, everything that comes from, you know, unit control looks really easy to use. Doesn't look confusing. It doesn't look like your, your guys are going to get lost in your orders and be like, what the hell are we supposed to do? But I'm really liking how this game's turning out. And, and I think it's just going to be one of the better games that we probably get, hopefully, in 2023. I think that with uh, Broken Arrow, it's going to be probably an early access release, and it will have a lot of really cool things at it at the start, but I think it'll probably do, or, you know, it'll take a little while before we get anywhere near the content that we get with what we get with Warno now, which is still early access, and what we've gotten with uh, Wargame, you know, Red Dragon, European Escalation, things like that, but with... The, what we get with air, naval, uh, being able to call a naval task force to help, amphibious landings with LCACs. I think we get some really cool gameplay loops with this and some, you know, things that we don't get with normal games um, like war game that will kind of take it to a, a thing of its own um, to kind of stand upon. Uh, this, just this, everything I've seen from these gameplay trailers and gameplay is just absolutely awesome. I love every second of it. Um, just makes me want to play war game. Like I actually, I see these and I'm like, I want to play war game for a little bit until this comes out because it just makes me want to play RTS games more and more and more. And that's where I think what we're going to get with um, Broken Arrow is it's just going to be this kind of resurgence in RTS games um, that I think a lot of people who grew up on like World in Conflict, maybe playing war game for a little bit and didn't really want to get into Warno, probably going to come back because of this game. I mean, the modding alone opens up so much with the customization of vehicles. Like, you can get the Striker. We now have Shorad Laser Strikers. I'm sure someone's going to mod that in to where that's, an, that's a variant that you could build into your deck. It's like, oh, you got, you got your Striker? Well, now you have the Laser Shorad one for air defense. You know, it's just there's a lot of possibilities that we can use with this game to future-proof. Uh, new aircraft, you know, everybody and their mother's making 6th gen stealth aircraft. Whenever those are unveiled, boom, they're going to be in-game. Somebody can mod them in there. Same with the B-21 Raider. I'm sure somebody's already working on something to throw that in as soon as that hits into the game, too. Um, there's a lot of really cool possibilities with this game that you don't get from other games like War Game when it comes to the modding, vehicle customization, and things like that. So it's a really cool system i'm really enjoying seeing these gameplay videos really hoping for a 2023 access uh, early access to get in here and actually try some of these systems out see what it can do you know build up bases you know use your supply logistics things like that explore these large maps and see what kind of battles you can create with it but i definitely want to know what you guys think uh, i know a lot of you guys do enjoy rts games on my channel a lot of you watch me do everything from world in conflict to men of war to um you know just warno war game red dragon things like that and i want to know what you guys think after seeing some of this checking it out a little bit do you think it's going to be a good competitor do you think it's going to be better is it something you're really looking forward to something you're going to play uh, actually let me know down in the comments below let me know what you guys think of broken arrow and if you think it's going to be the rts game that rules 2023 talk to you guys later peace